Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, this is 1976's Are You Ready? Voluto Nero, Smooth Silk Raw Velvet, or White Emmanuel, or sorry, Black Emmanuel, White Emmanuel. Now I'm going to show you the two versions here. Um, that I have, which showcase different titles for the film. The first is the DVD put out by Severin some years ago um, that I purchased as part of the Black Emmanuel box set, which is Black Emmanuel, White Emmanuel. And you see there on the cover, Laura Gemser and Annie Bell. And then the second version is the Blu-ray by Full Moon. Hmm. Emmanuel black velvet okay now when i say version no, they're, they're the same exact movie just different titles and it's showing you the different titles that this film goes by now why would that be of interest the reason is is because while this film is somehow seemingly incorporated into the black emmanuel film series it really doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the Black Emmanuel film series, even though it's part of the Black Emmanuel, uh, one of the two box sets. Now, what's interesting about this movie is not only the various titles, not only the fact that it really doesn't have much to do with the Black Emmanuel film series. Not only the fact that it was directed by somebody that didn't have anything to do with the Black Emmanuel film series, as far as I am aware here. But, yes, uh, Brunello Rondi. Bruno, yeah, I don't know how you pronounce his name. This 94-minute film is without a doubt in its own world, apart from the Black Emmanuel film series, but also in its own world. I would tell you that you would be hard-pressed to find another film like this out there. This is a movie that has character development, but minus what the mainstream cinematic world would call a standard plot. Now, what's interesting is that within movies, specifically sexploitation films, you can see this, where you will have characters in almost like a dazed and confused kind of world Moving through the film from place to place to place to place to place to place, just like that, without those arcs or twists or turns of a standard what the world would think of storyline plot. This is a movie that has the themes of dreams, being young, getting older, family, jealousy, divorce, photography, art, life and death. The architecture, the actual architecture of Egyptian monuments and temples and, and pharaoh grounds. Wow. Is this a sexploitation film? Is this an erotic film? Sure, that's incorporated. But it's well beyond that also. Mysticism. Religion. Sexuality. class levels and as I mentioned previously the location of Egypt is definitely a character and as a matter of fact I don't think I can recall a film that utilizes 
ancient Egyptian architecture the way this film does. Now, I'm going to tell you something here. I've reviewed other Black Emmanuel films on this channel. This is my favorite of the Black Emmanuel films. Even though it's... You'd be hard-pressed to call it a Black Emmanuel film, okay? Now, that said, what's interesting is that if you know the Black Emmanuel films, Laura Gemser is, is a photographer of sorts, right? In this film, she's being photographed in some very disturbing sequences that deal with the philosophy of life, of rot, decay, sexuality, age, and shit. <laughs> this is a film that showcases Al Cliver, Laura Gemser, and Annie Bell in particular. Annie Bell, I'm absolutely obsessed with, okay? I absolutely adore her. I first saw her in Laure, which I've looked at on this YouTube channel. And of course, House at the Edge of the Park. Of course, the unbelievable absurd. But this film, she is really fantastic in. It actually has uh, the best outfits in the film as well. I once said, I've seen this film three times now. And I think after the first time, I said to myself, this film is like a ritual. It's like a 94-minute ritual. It's like a 94-minute poetic ritual of sorts. It's a movie that's very, very complex. And yet it does not have a standard plot. There's a relishing in character concepts and in characters and in locations. There's a mystery about the Egyptian architecture and its connection to the characters in this film. There's a homecoming of sorts when it comes to the family. But there's also corruption in there as well. Characters are seeking. Characters are lost. Characters are regretful. Characters are independent, hopeful, bisexual, lesbian and homosexual and heterosexual. Imagine a scene of rape with a camera next to dead carcasses. Lost, rotting, dead carcasses. Unaccounted for dead carcasses. Mind control. Ritualistic, mystic, religious mind control. Prophets. Animal sacrifice, trances, hallucinations, fire, temples, Middle Eastern music. Oh, the music. Oh, the music. When I first saw this film, I said, how is it? that they have soundtracks for all the other Black Emmanuel films, but they don't have a soundtrack for this one. Until about two months ago, it has finally been released. If you go on the Screen Archives website, only 500 copies, I think, were made on CD. To, to say I was excited is an understatement. The music in here is definitely a character. And there is an emotional, very powerful voice driven there is darkness and mystery and mysticism and foreign elements that are all combining together in the ritual that is this film it's a it the, the soundtrack just 
tugs at me, grips me, moves me in internally. When certain pieces of music repeat throughout the film, all of a sudden I will connect with what I'm looking at visually in a completely deeper, more complex way. That's what the music does. The music gives me chills. The music gives me chills with, the, with, with what is happening in the movie. It's so fascinating because you'll be at the hour mark of this film and you will realize that this is not standard script material. And yet so powerful in its seeming simplicity. Now... This film has um, softcore sex scenes in it, and we have a rape, as I mentioned. We have environments of photography, of erotic photography, that I have never seen before in my whole life. Um, at least I have not, and you probably have not yet either. There um, are lesbian scenes and there are almost ritualistic type meditative type sex scenes and there are sex scenes that are releases of sorts. What is your destiny? What is your dream matched with your reality? There's a great deal of art in this film, not just from Egypt, from way, way back in the old eras, but also acting, photography. Religion in this film could almost be art. It is. There is a sex scene between Annie Bell and Laura Gemser that is wondrous. Um, the sex scenes are not long in this film. But they are wondrous. Two girls in this uh, one kind of whorehouse, I guess. But it's like a very artistic, almost a temple of sorts. Um, some Muslim vibes in here as well. And I have to tell you, if you don't know Annie Bell, you probably know Laura Gemser. But if you don't know Annie Bell, um, I'm not typically a fan of short hair on girls. But for Annie Bell... There is no other way. Love her. Um, and if you're a fan of big natural breasts, you're going to love her as well. Um, didn't really get a chance to see her butt too much in, in the film. But uh, let's just say also it's 1976. So you get to really see um, if uh, it's uh, people's real hair color. If you catch my drift. Um, Black Emmanuel, White Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Black Velvet, lots of different titles. And, um, this is from the Oscar nominated screenwriter of La Dolce Vita and Eight and a Half. Did you catch that? Did you catch what I just said there? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You got it. And we do have an actor from Emmanuel in America. We have someone from the film Moonstruck. Oh my gosh. This Another alternate title is Emmanuel in Egypt. Oh, and again, let me just reiterate it to you. It was written and directed by a Fellini collaborator. That should set this film apart from the other Black Emmanuel films right then and there, folks. I adore this movie. I love this movie, but it is a cinematic experience that most would never understand and would not be used to. There is poetry, there is philosophy, there is theology, and of course, there is sexuality. This is White Emmanuel, Black Emmanuel, Black Emmanuel, White Emmanuel, Annabelle. <laughs> Here it is, folks, from 1976. 
You think of the film Dazed and Confused and how some people might say there's no plot in there. This is not a coming-of-age film like Felicity, which I've looked at on this YouTube page, also released by Severin. It is a journey. An internal adventure. A group of people. The past, the present, and the future. The aimless, confused, truth and lies, art and dreams. Ultimately, where we are now and where we all will be.